Carlos. Hello, welcome to the channel. My name is Carlos and today we're reviewing the Certina PH200M, a really awesome vintage inspired skin diver made in Switzerland that retails just south of a thousand dollars. So this is the Certina PH200M Diver. This is a really awesome and really elegant vintage inspire dive watch that really aims to pack a ton of value into an everyday automatic sports watch. Before I go any further into this review, I do want to point out that this watch was sent to me by the good folks over at Certina. However, I do not get to keep the watch. As soon as I'm done with the review, I'm going to have to send it back. This means that Certina has absolutely no say in the making of this review and that I will be giving you my unfiltered, honest opinion on my experience handling and wearing this watch. Now, while Certina is not the most popular brand in the United States, this is a brand that is actually super popular in Eurasia. It is a company that's been around for 130 years. It prides itself in their DS concept, which I believe stands for double security. And it's basically the concept that watches should be both heavily shock resistant and water resistant. And interestingly enough, it is one of the few entry level luxury brands on the Swatch Group that offer affordable ISO certified divers. So if you're a fan of affordable and Swiss divers, Seretina is definitely a brand you want to check out. All right, so with all of that said, let's start this review by looking at the fit and finish of the case. This is a case that is really nice and really elegant, obviously taking a lot of cues from vintage skin divers of the past with a very thin case, very rounded case, not any sharp edges. I'm making the very interesting choice of just using one finish over all of the surfaces. This is a very, very polished case. As far as I can tell, there is absolutely no brushing or satination anywhere on the case. Being that this is a dive watch, we will find a very nice signed screw down crown. However, to keep it in line with that vintage skin diver design, we see absolutely no crown protection, which gives it a very nice minimalist feel while at the same time removing a lot of the bulk that is more common in more modern sport watches. This particular version of the watch has a beautiful matte dark blue dial with printed hour and minute markers. You will find a Certina branding and overlaid logo in a really nice coppery tone at the 12 o'clock. And then you will find the DS Phantom branding at the six o'clock. This watch does feature a date complication at the three o'clock. And while it doesn't have a chapter ring, it does seem to have a very nice wide slash silver outer ring that really breaks up the surfaces between the dial and the blue of the bezel. The hands are very nice short style hands in a very nice copper tone color to add to what they're referring to as gilded accents. Well, the second hand is a very nice and clean matte white that really just adds to the overall sportiness and also readability of the dial. Another really nice detail of the watch is the very thin and very subtle sector lines also in a little copper tone that adorn the center of the dial. The bezel is a very nice 120 click unidirectional bezel. Here we'll hear a little sound of the crunchiness. Very nice, very solid, very tactile. The bezel itself has a really nice coin edge style knurling that just makes the bezel incredibly easy to operate. One of the highlights of the watch is the bubble style ceramic bezel that they've put in this watch that is very reminiscent of Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms vintage divers. The markers on the bezel are also filled with that really nice gilded copper tone material that give this watch that very subtle yet very elegant touch. The loom on this watch is pretty phenomenal, covering both the hour, minute, and second hands, as well as giving us a nice amount of loom at the 12 o'clock peep on the bezel itself. Another highlight of this watch is the very nice rounded, bubblicious double dome sapphire that is just another little detail that adds to that vintage feel of this particular watch. 
One of the things that's interesting about the crystal is that it is not a top hat crystal, meaning that it doesn't stick out above the watch. It is actually very nicely flush and at the same level as the bezel. So you don't run any risk of tapping the edge of the crystal on hard surfaces and possibly chipping it. Due to the nature of the rounded crystal, you are, however, going to get a little bit more reflections on this dial, but the nice matte dial and the contrast of colors and the gilded accents make this just a very easy watch to read in pretty much any lighting situation. This particular watch does host a very nice display case back from which we can see the powermatic movement beating at six ticks per second. One of the things that's uh, worth pointing out about this particular powermatic is that it's a slightly higher grade of the powermatic that does away with any of the plastic escapement parts and adds uh, real proper metal escapements. This particular version of the watch comes in a very nice and very subtle NATO nylon strap. This NATO definitely gives the watch a bit of a more uh, sporty slash everyday playful feel to the watch, which I think balances the case very well, which tends to be a little bit more on the elegant side due to the fact that it's fully polished like what you would expect on a dress watch. As you guys know, all of the watches that I get in for review, I like to run them through the time grapher to get an idea of the quality of movements. And while the time grapher does not say the whole story of how accurate a watch is going to be, I do think that it's a good benchmark. With that said, the PH200M did not play very nice with the time grapher. This is something that is not uncommon. Not all watches are going to read very well with a time grapher. It's very dependent on the construction of the case. Uh, this particular movement in most positions had a pretty strange beat error happening uh, and you can see it kind of in the graph where instead of having like a solid line we actually have a line that is quite, quite spread away so the average time keeping across all six positions for this watch was 3.8 seconds. However, due to the weird sort of readings that I was getting on the time grapher, I went ahead and I did an extra test on this uh, particular watch where basically I sunk the second hand to my iPhone. And about 36 hours later, I checked what the offset was on the watch compared to the iPhone to sort of just get like a real world scenario as in, uh, you know, as I wore the watch through those 36 hours, you know, how much of a time difference I found. And I did find that over 36 hours, the watch gained five seconds, which if we were to grab that data and actually interpolate it to a 24 hour span, it would be a little bit over three seconds added per day. So even though the time grapher was a little hectic, I do think that this watch was actually quite accurate, but I am a little bit worried about the longevity of the watch due to the sort of like, weirdness of the beat errors that I was getting. Overall, I think that this is a really accurate watch though. So now that we've spoken a little bit about accuracy, let's get into the price. So this watch basically retails at $950. So just like I said at the beginning of the review, right under that $1,000 mark. I think that this particular watch, if you're into skin divers, is uh, quite attractive for that price range. However, I think that if you're more of a spec buff and you like your watches to have more water resistance and maybe have a Steel bracelet. Um, I think that maybe you should look at something like the DS Action Diver, also by Certina, which is a couple of bucks more expensive, but I think it's just a better offering on paper. With that said, I think that the styling and accents and overall vibe of this watch is really good for that sub $1,000 price. I think that this is a watch that is a great sports watch, but it's really more of a sports watch than it is a dive watch, especially compared to like that other Action Divers by Certina. All right, so with all that said, let's get into likes and dislikes. So. Um, the things that I like about this watch is the gilded accents. I think that these look really cool. They're really fun. I think that if you are a person that wants a little bit of flash, but you're not ready to go full out on a gold watch or maybe a two-tone, I think that this is a perfect, perfect, perfect compromise. I think that it's also very nice that this is not quite rose gold. It's not quite yellow gold. It definitely has more of like a brass slash copper, uh, maybe even bronze kind of feel to it that keeps it very nautical but at the same time gives it a bit of it more of like a timely elegance that i think is very nice another thing that i really 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 like about this watch is the thinness this watch wears so thin on the sleeve and this might be one of the things why maybe you choose a 
watch like this versus the action diver which is going to be just a little bit chunkier is that maybe you want something that's a little bit more low profile especially if you're going to wear it on the nato that's one thing that works really nicely with this particular watch because when you add the nato you're always adding a little bit of extra thickness between your wrist and the watch itself so the watch is always going to sit a little tall however this watch is so thin that it kind of just absorbs that extra thickness of the double pass nato and that is something that i really really like about it as far as dislikes here i don't think that there's any really major uh dislikes or flaws to point out with this watch uh i personally would have liked a little bit more of a mix of finishing i would really love to see a little bit more brushing on maybe the side of the case or maybe just a little bit of brushing on the logs i think that that would make this watch feel just a little bit more complex and a little bit more crafted and i think that that's one of those details that would allow you to maybe look at it compared to like the action diver and potentially excuse why even though this watch is not as feature proof as the action diver why the price is so close to it the last thing that i would mention about this watch that i think is just a missed opportunity is the fact that the nato strap is just a little too short for me i have seven and a half inch wrists and as you can tell in order for me to wear this watch comfortably the actual left upper part of the strap is barely engaging in the last loop and to be honest i think that a lot of the fun of nato straps is the ability of being able to sort of like roll them back into those loops and get those extra details there i think that that's a missed opportunity anyways folks please drop me a comment and let me know your thoughts on the certina ph 200 m do you own one do you want one have you had one before kind of what's your overall sort of thoughts and experience around this particular watch uh, i would also like to take the time to thank you for watching this video all the way to the end if you enjoy this content please take a second to like and subscribe and i really hope to see you guys on the next video thanks for watching bye